since the dawn of time, we have not been alone. On mankind's course through history, there's been an unseen higher force shaping, guiding, watching. Now it's here. And that's just the qualifier. Welcome back to Total Wipeout. Buenos Aires, Argentina, home to the greatest obstacle course in the world. A handful of daring Brits, including a banker, a psychiatrist and a private investigator, have travelled to this foreign land to take on this incredible challenge. Most will return home losers, but one will return home with £10,000 and a really rubbish trophy. So in a way, even the winner's a bit of a loser. Let the games begin. Welcome to a brand new series of Total Wipeout. Now, human endeavor is a wonderful thing. They said man would never fly, but he did. They said man would never set foot on the moon, but he did. They said that a TV game show consisting predominantly of foam obstacles and people falling into water would never make it to a fourth series, but it did. How? I honestly don't know, but I think it's best if we don't flag it up with the BBC. Quick, on with the show. Today's challenge comprises the qualifier, new and improved, crash mountain, old and improved, dizzy dummies, old and unimproved, and the wipeout zone, if anything, worse. So, I'm back, the big red balls are back, Eduardo's back. People smashing their faces into ginormous foam objects are back. And, phew, so's Amanda. I'm joined now at the top of the qualifier by Grace from Leicester, who's one of those lazy, layabout, good-for-nothing students. Well, we're honoured that you have dragged yourself out of bed today, Grace, to grace us with your presence. That's all right. <laughs> So what are you a student of, then? Drama. A drama student! So are you very dramatic? Yes, I would think so. Very dramatic! I need the baby Grace! Watch me smash this car to the face! So, Grace, the 19-year-old drama student from Leicester, gets this series underway. She's been on stage since she was seven, so this performance should be a dollar. Today's first obstacle is... Las Traplancas, the old family favourite. Competitors must leap and swing to safety, and that's Traplanca. But if they fall, it's a climb up the steps of terror. Then they have to do it again. And that's also Traplanca. Now, if this show is to get off to the dramatic start I'm hoping for, Grace needs to start injecting that drama right about now. Yeah, well, a near miss, you see, that adds to the jeopardy. So dramatic. Very dramatic! But she's made it! Really bringing out the drama in these. Oh, yeah, she made that look extremely difficult. Oh, take your bottle! That was the least graceful thing I've ever seen. Well, not graceful, but entertaining for us. Next, it's the sucker punch. This should give Grace the perfect opportunity to demonstrate her action movie potential. She was a woman on the edge of a narrow ledge. Drama, 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 drama. Grace expresses all the emotions here. Surprise, pain, muddiness. Is that an emotion? Yeah. So Grace now preparing herself to set foot on the greatest stage of all. It's time for the big balls. And should this plucky drama student need any motivation, she'll find it here. So will the first big ball runner of this series be a performance to remember? Oh yes, yes it will, that will be rememberable. It's good to be back. Grace, looking tired now. She needs all of her strength, though, as she approaches the final obstacle on today's qualifier, which is... Well, what's that? The course designers were given 150 pesos to buy a new obstacle, and obviously they've kept the money and just stolen two large letters from the front of the local shopping centre. So, for the first time ever on Total Wipeout, I give you... the swinging letters of sh. The competitors must dash along the beam whilst dodging the giant swinging S and H. 
As a drama student, Grace is used to handling lots of difficult words, but how will she do with two big letters? Oh, the drama! Encore, please! Taken out by the giant S. Didn't even get near the giant H. Well, Grace's audition is just about over, but the clock doesn't stop until the leading lady reaches the top of that podium. Last-minute wardrobe check, not a pro. And what a performance, 2 minutes 59. But will it put Grace among the 12 fastest qualifiers and earn her a place in the next round? Pretty amazing, right? Mm, not, not really, no. Do you think you got through to the next round? Did you do well enough? I hope so. I hope so. I don't know. It seems like sort of days that you're there. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. Go get dried off. Next is Martin, and he's got a dream. He wants to complete the qualifier in a hat. Yeah, it's not a big dream, but, you know, it's achievable. Oh, no, oh, that is a shame. Yeah, another look at that, I think. Yeah. Maybe again. Yeah. And again. <laughs> and I think just once more. There we go. So Martin must now take on the sucker punch without the aid of a hat. Martin should have the right genetic makeup for this. His father was a pro boxer. Oh, 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 oh. He's got a jaw of steel. It's bent there, but it's of steel. Martin took quite a blow there, but at least he is through the... Oh, no. Oh, well. Pipped at the post. Uh, yeah, at least his hat didn't get muddy or anything. Hatless Martin heads to the big balls. Right, here we go. Oh, ouch! That head-first landing was enough to snap a man's hat in two. It's a blessing, really, that the thing fell off early on. Maybe a hard hat would have been good. Helmet. Too late now. After that head injury, Martin looks a little bit unsteady. <laughs> he must regain his balance for the swinging letters of shut. Timing, Martin, is everything. Martin enters the S. Oh, hangs on. Now tries a vault. And, oh, and the letter S strikes again. Sounds like Sesame Street. This is Francis, a psychiatrist. Now, apparently, psychiatrists can communicate with your subconscious. I think you'll find they can't, actually. Who said that? I did. Your subconscious, apparently, we did. Yeah, please stop that. So Francis now approaching the sucker punch and contemplating what has caused it to become so aggressive. Yeah, that sucker punch has really got some issues. Poor Francis got a real mouthful of mud there. Onto the big balls now. Floyd's gonna love that. Can you just go away? Now, just relax. Francis, tell me, when did you first realise you were about to fall off a big red ball? Go away! I just want to be your friend, Richard. I don't need friends. Now, Francis just has the swinging letters of shut to go now. No one's made it past them yet, so will she be the first? No. 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 Oh, hang on. I think Amanda's got a joke. Now, that's what you call a Freudian slip. She's much funnier than you. I mean, we are. This is 39-year-old Joy from Derby. Joy's already been on the course for over a minute and she hasn't yet reached the first obstacle. But maybe she'll turn things around on Las Traplancas. Here we go. Yes, come on. <laughs> yes! No. Yes! No. Oh, come on, Joy. It's not like it's a competition or anything. Oh. Yes, Joy's made it. I honestly wasn't expecting that. Seems like Joy is getting better and better as she goes along. Come on, Joy. <coughs> oh, oh, that was just unlucky. Not her fault. <coughs> Joy works in a Botox clinic. Quite a fun one, by the looks of things. She's used to handling wrinkles, but can she handle big balls? Oh, come on, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Come on, Joy. Get in there. Get out of there. Fast. No choice. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that feels good for us. So, the first time the motivator has been used today. Joy was like a golf ball there, struck by a giant red driver. 
<laughs> oh dear, that was landed in the water. I think Joy's feeling a little under par right now. I'm going to stop that and let's just rejoin her a little later on. When the pain stopped. I'm the Prince of Egypt, Muhammad Nagib the Pharaoh. I shall walk this course like an Egyptian. Now, I know, 58-year-old Mohammed does look like a pharaoh. He's actually a retired maths teacher from Taunton. Can he make it over the first Traplonka? No, he can't. <laughs> Which means Mohammed will be the first contestant to tackle the Steps of Terror. <laughs> oh, well, that was a bit easy. Just some steps. Right, the second Traplonka. Has this ex-teacher learned anything? No. Nothing. Headgear probably ruined the aerodynamics there. Not, not to mention his vision, I suspect. Can Mohammed actually see anything right now? Probably just as well. He's on the sucker punch. No, he can't see anything. Can <laughs> Poor old Mohammed really didn't see that one coming. I mean, literally didn't see it. Felt it. Visibility down to nothing now, using touch alone to find his way to the big balls. Probably just as well he, he can't see right now. Here he goes. Ah, me sphinx, that must have hurt. You see? Sorry. Come on, Mo! The swinging letters of sh oh. now. What's that? It's a giant S, Mo. I know, you talk maths, but come on, that's basic stuff. It's just an S. Only the bravest shall pass the letters of sh. They require skill, flexibility, timing, and most of all, courage. Well, come on, then. Oh! Oh! Oh, well, add all of those things, <laughs> just not necessarily in the right order. <laughs> wow, check out that scorpion kick. His heels nearly hit his head. They're not supposed to do that, are they? That's, no, they do now. So Scorpion King Mo hauls himself up that final set of stairs to finish in a hefty five minutes and 50 seconds. It was just too hard. I thought I would just walk it like an Egyptian. Well, hellfire. Building pyramids is easy. It's supposed to be hard. This is 29-year-old Trudy. How did she get those bullets through customs? Trudy thinks she, she's in the army, but she actually works in a leisure centre in Essex. This, however, is Alex. He actually was in the army. I'm loving the T-shirt. I see what you've done there. It's a man holding. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what awkward. Yeah. So who's better at assault courses? Real-life ex-soldiers like Alex, or pretend ones like Trudy here. It's going to be Alex, isn't it? It's going to be. Alex sets off with a commando roll down the slope. Fantastic. Quickly up and onto the pontoons. Ah, oh, you see? How will Trudy's pretend army approach work out now? Ah! Oh, that wasn't pretend! Ace plant! That was real! A quick public safety message. Kids, don't use your face as a break. You might break your face. Like that. Oh. Real Army Alex on the first Traplonka. And he's across. Now for the second. Oh, a double Traplonka. What a Traplonka! So now it's time for Pretend Army Trudy. Yeah, let's just pretend that didn't happen. Alex now approaches the big red balls. Here we go. Oh, no pretending needed here. Uh oh, right up to that point there. Well, oh, mind you, you made it to the fourth ball. And to be fair, there is no army training that could really prepare you for the big balls. We're in the army now! You're not. You're still not. Never were. No. Seems this Argentinian mud contains hallucinogens. Yeah. Can he be the first to make it across? Or even get past the first letter? Ooh! Oh! That pesky S strikes again. Can Trudy succeed where all others have failed? Maybe. Maybe! No. Now, I really see a pattern emerging here. Pretend Army Trudy completes the qualifier in a reasonable time of 3 minutes and 13 seconds. Uh, for real, well done. But Real Army Alex finishes in a superb 1 minute 49. The fastest so far today. You'd better watch out. It's a bit slippery up there. Well, I I did warn you. Real Army Alex is at the top of the leaderboard with Hapless Martin in second. 
in joint third is Shrewdy Francis and Amazing Grace. Pretend Army Trudy in fifth, Scorpion King Mo in sixth. Hang on, where's Underpar Joy? Oh, there she is. After that battering from the motivator, it's a wonder Joy has made it to the finish podium at all. A time of 7 minutes and 32 seconds. So let's see how that changes the leaderboard. Oh, I've just been told it doesn't. No, makes no difference. All that for nothing. Oh my gosh. Next is Amy, a 23-year-old PA from Essex. She'd like to marry a prince and become a princess. So if there are any princes out there watching... Harry, I'm thinking she's the girl for you. Yes. And so the dainty maid begins her quest to defeat the wicked wipeout course. Oh, yeah, well, that would impress a prince. Yeah, that would impress a frog. Yeah, that would impress anyone. Back to the princess fairy tale, and she prepares to take on the big balls. Come on, princess. Oh, dear. That was a royal performance. Amy demonstrated that even on the big balls, a princess can still retain her grace, her dignity, her... No, nothing. If you've got a case that needs solving, this is your man. 36-year-old Matt. He is a private investigator. Please stop that, please. So do you live in Hawaii and drive a red Ferrari just like Magnum? No, I live in Abingdon and I drive a Punto. My name's Mighty Matt! I'm going to munch my way through this course and totally eat it up! I didn't really understand that. So how will Abingdon's answer to Tom Selleck fare on the qualifier? Looks like this Magnum has been eating too many chalk ices. Mmm, chalk ice. Do I have got time to get myself? Well, no. There's a news agent right next door. I'm going to go for it. While he's on there, look, I've got ages. Well, don't film me. Film him. So, Magnum Pie is at the Traplonkas. The good news is he hasn't fallen in. The bad news is he's kind of stuck there, really. Yeah. Testing the ropes. Chalk ice was great. I think it's best to temporarily close this case and come back to Magnum Pie later. So, who is the next contestant? Ah, Shabba. Ah, I thought it said Abba. No, I said I thought it said Abba. Oh, for goodness sake. I'm a regular football player. I play every week. I play with the homies. What, you play with the homeless? Uh, no, not the homeless. <laughs> They're the boys, the homies. Oh, the homies. Amanda there, proving exactly how street she is. Shabba from Essex is representing the east side. And now he's representing the wet side. Time for the steps of terror. Again, he made that look easy. They're just some steps. Huh? Oh, but he made that look funny, which is a service. Shabba's homeless friends will not be pleased with his performance. He used to love a man. Thank you. Amanda, you can forget me. Don't forget the name. And if Shaggy wants to be remembered, he'll have to make an impression on the sucker punch. No oh, groin punch! No more Mr. Loverman for you. Oh, Shaggy. So far today, nobody has cracked the sucker punch. But can Magnum Pie change all of that? Can he solve the biggest mystery of them all? Why did he apply for this show? I doubt it. Ah! Too many red wines last month! One steak out too many! Let's come back to Matt later. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? I haven't the foggiest. This is Grunt, and he likes planes. And possibly penguins as well, maybe. But will he soar over the Traplonkas? No. No. Weirdly, Grant loves plane spotting, but is terrified of flying. Clearly rubbish at it as well. Right, onto the sucker punch. Careful now. Oh, he's going to be annoyed with that. It sent him flying. Scared. Private investigator Magnum Pie is close to cracking the case of the big red balls. Oh, the big red balls did it. Case closed. Can nobody finish this course in a hat? 
where did it go wrong for him? Let's look at the clues. Clue one, he fell off the big balls. That's it, I've got nothing else. Sadly, Matt couldn't complete the qualifier, but he was a trooper. He ran the course for the fun of it. It's not always about the winning, the fame, or the money. Oh, no, let's consider for a moment the more honourable reasons that motivate Total Wipeout contestants. Money! 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 In it for the money! OK, so some are in it just for the money. Bus driver Phil wants the money because he needs to buy a bigger tie. And this is Tafrina, who's realised she needs the money to buy the rest of her sleeves. She's also realised she's left the gas on. <laughs> Tafrina now going down the ramp. Is it just me or is she clockwork? There's just something about it. Phil approaches the Traplonka. Here we go. Oh, and he makes it. No, no, he doesn't make it. Didn't make it. He won't want to repeat that. Yeah, he won't want to repeat that. I'll say it as long as it keeps happening. Come on, Phil, keep reminding yourself about the money. Ten thousand pounds! <laughs> yeah, imagine how big a tie you could buy with that! Safrina <laughs> needs to keep on her feet if she wants to win that money. That's what I want. Good start. Doing well. Ghost punch, and that's the first ghost punch of this series. Phil, risking everything now and going all in on the big balls. That money is still within his grasp. Ish. Right, here we go. Take the money! No, I he invested far too much in that, really. Tafrina might have to speed up if she wants that cash. Ooh. Oh, no, she hung on. Here it comes again. Can she do it again? Yeah. This is horse-loving Harriet. Harriet wants for nothing more than to spend her days riding bareback across wild frontiers. You just gallop across the hills and he just sweeps across it and you're just like, wow, I feel like I'm flying. Harriet loves jumping. And whilst this can prove awkward in social situations, it is perfect for one thing. Getting over the swinging letters of sh. So, can Horsey Harriet be today's first contestant to make it over the swinging letters of sh? Do you know, she might just do this. She could be the one. This could be it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say no. This is Charlie. She's a PE teacher, dance instructor, and fitness fanatic. So time for a little boxer size. Here she goes. Oh, she's fallen in. Oh, sorry, I wasn't looking. She hasn't. She's she's still on. She's doing amazingly well. Ooh, she's doing good. Very few people can dodge this beast, but she's oh no, she has done it. Time for a victory dance. I think Charlie is the first person to complete the sucker punch today. That's her victory dance. Do not try that at home. Big balls, and Charlie's going for it. <laughs> Come on, three out of four's not bad. Well, I do hope Charlie's students don't start calling her Miss Bouncy. That'd be terrible. Time for the swinging letters of shut. Many have tried. All have failed. Will she make it? Ooh, she's past the S. Stops at the H, and she's going. This is incredible. She's done it! Charlie's happy, Amanda's happy, I'm happy, Charlie's happy, Charlie's happy again, Amanda's happy again. Yeah, all right, OK. <laughs> From now on, she should be known as Charlie, Queen of Sh... Barbie, let's go party. Real Army Alex is still on top, but look where Shabba ranks. He's second. Charlie, the Queen of Sher, has pushed Atlas Martin down to fourth place. Amy and Harriet have jumped in above Francis. Phil, Grant, Trudy and Tafrina have knocked Underpar, Joy and Moe completely out of the game. But who's next? Oh, great. Some Irish dancing on the show. I love Michael Flatley and his jiggle dancey thing he did. Oh, no. This is actually 25-year-old Jerome. He's a semi-professional boxer. What does that mean? Semi... Is wear one glove? So, Jerome Flatley heads down the ramp. 
straight onto the pontoons. Got to admire his fighting spirit. Yeah. He comes from a family of 18 siblings, so he should be used to fighting his own corner. The first Traplonka. Oh, that was tremendous. So agile. Oh, that wasn't so good. That was just rubbish. <laughs> He really wants to keep his mouth closed here. That water hasn't been changed in four series now. I know that for a fact. That's all, keep me down! Jerome Flatley has remained undefeated in all three of his semi-professional fights so far. But can he remain undefeated against Amanda Bark? Oh, that's a shame. That is a shame. <laughs> Weren't expecting that, were you? I was. He's doing well on the sucker punch. Obviously, he's doing very well. A lot at stake for him here, all of his dignity, for instance. But he's made it, he is across. This is amazing stuff. Tearing through the course, making the qualifier look absolutely impossible, like everybody else, because it is. Paul Jerome takes a tumble on the third. Oh, dear. So just the letters of sh to go now for Jerome. Yeah, please stop that now. Thank you. OK. I'm gone. Only the letter H to go. Oh. Technically, that was below the belt, I'd say. Yes, Jerome Flatley has made it across the swinging letters of Sher. Which would have been a bit more amazing if Charlie hadn't done it first a bit earlier on. Still, she didn't do it with a red star shaved into her head. You beat that course into submission, but the big red balls gave you a bit of a battering. Didn't let it phase me at all. Came back fighting stronger. They get knocked down. You get straight back up, and that's what a true champion does. Jerome is in the house. All right. Technically, doesn't a true champion not get knocked down in the first place? Yeah, anyway, let's move on. Three contestants left, and this is Cat, who's a clinical nurse from Northampton. This cat always gets the cream. Meow! Yeah, Cat seems to think she is a cat. And this is Dave from London. By day, he's a boring banker, but by night... <laughs> He's a boring banker who makes weird monkey noises. We're going to run round his course and make Tarzan look like a little girl. Dave's an expert at parkour. It's where you run around, jump a lot and fall off things. Perfect preparation then for total wipeout. See what I mean? Close, but no cigar. Come on, Dave! Which is just as well, really, because no one should force a monkey to smoke. How will Cat the Cat fare? No pause for thought there, and not a perfect landing, but she's hanging on by a whisker. She's done it. Stop that. Back to Ooh Dave. Yep, and he hasn't quite done it. You can do it, you can do it. Come on. No, he can't. Can Cat the Cat do it? No, Cat the Cat can't. Back to Ooh Dave. Can he roll with the punches here? No, no, monkey punch. He's off. Cat the cat. I thought cats were clean animals. Not this one, obviously. <laughs> oh. Still proof there, actually, that cats don't always land on their feet. See? It was a myth. Just the letters of sh to go for Ooh -oo Dave. This should be no problem for him because he can do this. Sometimes. Here he goes. And he gets a nudge from the lower half of the S. I've never said that before, or had cause to. <laughs> Nevertheless, after all that monkeying around, it's still a quick time, and Dave's almost certainly guaranteed himself a place in the next round, which is more than can be said for Cat. Three minutes ten isn't a bad time, but it won't be enough to qualify. I said, won't be, no. Can I respectfully request, please, that there are no more animal-themed contestants on the show? It's so serious, three. Worse than that, I'm running out of animal-based puns, and I don't want to be pigeonholed as the animal guy. No, pigeonholed was not a pun. There's one more contestant left, and please make him be a normal human being. Please? <laughs> what did I just say? Right, get my agent on the phone now. Thank you. Hello, Fido? It's Richard. I went your hamster watch my chicken legs run round this court. Never mind the legs, I'm transfixed by the yellow underpants. So, this is 21-year-old Liam from Leicester. Liam is a chicken salesman. Let me just repeat those words. Liam is a chicken salesman. Yeah, a lot of effort per chicken, I imagine. Try this, man. Come on, Liam. Why do you love chickens so much? Because it's so funny. They've all got different characters. 
Do you eat them? Yeah. Wow, all those different amazing characters, and they taste just like chicken. It's a win-win. On to the big balls. Oh, he's on the, he's on the second. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's on the third and the fourth. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Come on, Liam. A chicken salesman could be about to make history. That's it, Liam. Hang on. You're nearly there. Come on, chicken leg Liam. Fly like a non-flightless bird, obviously. And he has! Yes, he has done it! If he can dash past the letters of Sher, Liam is on for a very fast time. Oh, wow, that's unlucky. But he's done it. Two minutes on the nose. Wow, beak. So let's have a look at the final leaderboard. <laughs> Jerome Flatley is in top spot with Real Army Alex marching into second place. Shabba and his home is in third, and Charlie, Queen of Shut, takes fourth place. Horsey Harriet gallops through to ninth, and in joint tenth, it's Shrinky Francis, Amazing Grace, and Phil and his massive tie, who spookily all share a time of two minutes, 59 seconds. How weird is that? So, 12 contestants are through to the next round and all just that little bit closer to winning £10,000. But before moving on, let's take a look back at the unfortunate and defeated who gave their best. It's just their best weren't as good as other people's best. That's why they lost. It was early morning yesterday I was up before the dawn And I really have enjoyed my stay but I must be moving on Like a king without a castle Like a queen without a throne I'm a on a lover And I must be moving on Crash Mountain This magnificent piece of machinery hasn't been used much since the last series Condemned as unsafe by the Argentinian government, it was put out to stud. But under cover of darkness, superstitious locals dragged it back to total wipeout. So here it is, cleaned a bit and proudly unfixed. It's a sprint to the centre podium over one moving arm, whilst avoiding the other two. If they crash out, they need to try again. The first five to make it to the centre are heading for the next round. The other seven are heading for the loser's bench. So, on podiums one and two. It's Charlie, Queen of Sha. Charlie, shh. No, just shh. And Princess Amy. I'm doing this for all the girls, yeah! Sexist. On podiums three, four, and five, it's Phil and his massive tie. All aboard, cos I'm going to the top of the mountain. Beep, beep. Ooh, ooh, Dave. Parkour to the core. And Amazing Grace, being a little dramatic. Very dramatic! At podium six, it's Horsey Harriet. I mean, gate six. This is the all you monkeys out there. I love you! Harriet shouts out to all the monkeys, but I don't think Uwu Dave was listening. On seven, eight and nine, it's Hatless Martin. Enough of the silliness! Now it's serious. Real Army Alex. Stay low! Move fast! Yeah, what he said. And Shabba and his homies. Love ya. Finally, on podium ten, eleven and twelve, it's Jerome Flatley. Chicken leg Liam. I ain't no chicken! Well, why are you doing that, then? And finally, Shrinky Francis, who seems to be hanging from something. Sometimes in life you've got to be cruel to be kind, but on Crash Mountain, being kind is sort of irrelevant. It's just cruel. Are you all ready? Yeah! That's kind of irrelevant, too, because I'm ready. Three, two... One! And they're off. Who will be the first to blime it? Feel straight on it. Under it, off it, back on it again. No! Oh. And here he goes. Oh, this is painful! Hold on, Phil. <laughs> Hold on. Yes, unbelievable. Phil and his massive tie are both safely atop Crash Mountain. And he made that look easy. Shabba and his homies now. Can he make the centre in time? All right, shut up! Shabba! Oh, now he's on the wrong bit. He's still on it. But not for long, no. Oh! Shabba! And the Queen of Sh Slips straight off. I'm sure her PE students won't be taking the mickey at this moment at all. 
David launches himself onto the platform. He's hanging on. Will his parkour skills save him? If that's his best parkour, then he's rubbish. Jerome Flatley now, having a bit of a snooze. What's he doing? Oh, no, he's awake. He's going for it. He's made it! Yeah! Wow! Wow! Ooh, a bit wow! close for comfort there, Jerome. Well, needs must. So Jerome Flatley is through to Dizzy oh, Dummies. Man. And he's getting to know oh, Phil man. and his massive tie a bit better. He's probably comforting right now. But who's going to be next? Oh. Not Liam, <laughs> no. Grace jumps. David misses. Alex tries. He's looking good. Come on, Alex. Amanda Holden is rooting for you. Will he make the run? Will he? Oh, thwarted. Real Army Alex has been sunk. Francis, that was just terrible. Just full of hope. Nowhere near. Amy next. That was even worse. They're just not trying anymore. As Horsey Harriet just proved. Oh, that's better, Charlie. Got to get up quicker than that. Well, get up and get on with it. All your students are watching. Oh, and that's another moment her PE students won't be reminding her of at all, I'm sure. For their benefit, here's a replay. So, Charlie's students, do please try and forget this moment. Never remind her of that and the screen and everything. Dave and Shabba. Oh, bad luck, Shabba, but look at Dave. He's on safe, he's up, he's going, and I think, yes, we have a third dizzy dummy. Ooh, ooh, Dave. Just two to go. Will it be Charlie, Queen of Shh, Princess Amy, Amazing Grace, Real Army Alex, Chicken Leg Liam, Hatless Martin, Horsey Harriet, Shabba and his homies, or Shrinky Francis, who's still holding on to the sky? So Alex now runs straight into the air. I wonder if he still loves Amanda now she's put him through this. He'll learn. Amazing Grace. For the grace of God, run, woman, run! She's on, she's up, and here she goes. Yes, yes, no, no, definitely not. Almost grabs Phil's hand there. If only he had some sort of big tie he could throw her to save her. And on we go. Alex, nowhere near. Harriet shows Alex how it's done. Can Horsey Harriet make it? Nay. And if you slow down, her scream actually sounds like this. She made that noise for real. I don't know what Martin's doing. I don't think he does either. Charlie, will she get her timing right? If she does, she will be on her way to Dizzy Dummies. It's all in the time. You better get up. It's getting awkward. She's up. And she's done it! No, yes, she's nearly... No, she hasn't. Phil's holding on tight. Will she make it, though? With a little help? Yes! A heroic catch from Phil. And some very gentlemanly help for Charlie, the Queen of Shun. That makes four. But we need five. There's just one place left, people. Yeah, Amanda's ahead of me with the maths, then. Shabba's out already. Oh, that's his grace. This really has become a free-for-all. More haste, less speed. Actually, speed makes it funnier. So more speed, less haste, more falling, please. Oh, thank you, Princess Amy. Perfect. Harriet. Oh, she would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for that pesky mechanical arm. Shabba and his homies. Lands flat, gets up quickly. And he's home and dry. Oh. Home and soaking wet, but home. So, Phil, David, Jerome, Charlie and Shabber and his homies are through. Seem to be getting getting on very well up there. Possibly a bit too what well. They should stop that now, please. So, those five lucky contestants make it through to the next round, where they'll face the stomach-churning dizzy dummies, probably twice, and then drained cold and soaked through. They might even get to do battle with the gruelling, nightmarish wipeout zone. But for the seven unlucky contestants who didn't conquer Crash Mountain, it's a hot shower, a warm cup of tea, and a nice sit-down. Oh, yeah, they're definitely the unlucky ones here. I am devastated. Absolutely devastated. I tried loads and then I got knocked off. 
Uh, I got like half, like just on the round bit. Oh, I think I tried my best and that's all I could ask for really. I just wish I was a bit quicker. It's the most terrifying experience of my life. <laughs> what happened in between? Oh, I have no memory. It was crazy. <laughs> was it a Freudian slip? It was more of a Freudian crash and a plop in the water, I think. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. My chicken's going to be really upset. Probably won't eat tomatoes again. All five competitors get spun round for 40 seconds, or until something breaks. Then, very dizzy, they set off through the rotating Swiss cheese before tackling the slippery slot. The last person to the other side is eliminated. The remaining four do the whole dizzy dash again. This time, they must dodge the sweeping arm of mushroom madness whilst being pelted by Los Tosas de Bolas. The first three qualify for the wipeout zone. Round around the garden like a teddy bear. One step, two step, throw up over there. <laughs> it's dizzy dummies. Are you all ready? Yay! Silence is golden, but it means let's spin them. Three, two, one. So they're on their way. But who is they? Here's an answer. Ooh, Ooh Dave, the parkour-loving banker from London. Shabba and his homies, not loving the dizzy dummy, it would seem. Doing it for the girls, it's Charlie, the queen of shut. Jerome Flatley, keep your eye on him, he might win. He might not as well. And finally, Phil and his massive tie. Without his massive tie, he's just called Phil. So it's time for this chap to crack out a fire hose. That's Jose. And if he fails, we'll break out hose B. Jerome's taking his time, finding his feet. Oh, finds a stumble instead. Dave's off the rotating bit. He's onto the slippery slots. And everyone else is piling up behind him. But Dave's through. We must stay out of the water now. Oh, no. <laughs> Typical banker. Bulldozes in, ultimately causes a crash. Dave will have to swim back to the slippery slots. Who have we got behind the round window? Oh, uh -oh. Big Ted. Little Ted. Jemima. Humpty? No. Oh, I see that window. Now that's Jerome Flat. Oh, that's it, Jerome. You're nearly there. He is too. One last jump and he's through to the next round of dizzy dummies. Ooh. He's done it. Yes! He hasn't fallen in once. Ooh, Dave's second attempt now and he's at the back of the pack. No one going for the lower slippery slot. Shabba onto the final jump now. Dave coming up behind fast. And he's lapped Charlie the Queen of Shabba. Yeah! Shabba and his homies are home safe and sad, which means it's probably time for some singing. Shabba man, Shabba! Yeah, if you can call that singing. Three competitors still to finish, and one of them will be eliminated. Phil jumps, and he's across. Can Dave follow suit? He's done it, which means... Charlie, the Queen of Sher, is out. My hopes of having a chick in the final have been done. I know. I just hesitated. I should have just gone for it. I tried my best, didn't I? You did it for the girl. Yeah, I tried to anyway. It's in hard luck. Go join the others. See you later, Charlie. Bye. Now, the producers have given me my very own total wipeout wall planner so I can tick things off as we go. So, that's Dizzy Dummies around one, which means it's now time for, um, uh, Dizzy Dummies round two. And someone's just earned himself a custard cream. Someone is waiting just for you. Spinning wheel, spinning true. Dizzy Dummies take two. And Shabba's looking a little, well, unwell. 
as before. Ooh, Dave's the first of the Swiss cheese, and he's straight through. Shabba's close behind him, though. It's time for tonight's guest ball throwers, three brothers who, between them, have over 30 years' experience of Argentina's violent defenders institution. Good luck, Dave. He's a banker. He's used to having things thrown at him. Yeah, maybe. He's probably less used to that, though. Oh! Dave takes a bit of a double whammy here. Kneecaps and then head. Oh, the lot. Thorough. It's a swim back to the start for Dave. Shabba remonstrates with the ball throwers. He's a lover man, took one to the head. Yeah, he's a lover man, not a fighter man. I think Jerome's not happy with the ball frequency either. Jerome flatly makes a big... Oh! Yeah, I'm disappointed. Mind you, I said he might or might not win. Everyone's standing just out of reach. Has Wipeout finally created an obstacle that's too hard? Phil Miners' his massive tie doesn't think so. He got so close. There's something in them blue shorts, I'm telling you. Yeah, probably. Let's hope it's not his part. Or it'll be very soggy by now. <laughs> the other three, understandably now, looking a little bit nervous. Go on, Dave. Do some of that parkour or something. <laughs> Ooh. I love this new game. Dave takes one for the team. <laughs> Shabba's next in line. Here we go. Has he learned anything? Technique, perhaps. He's studied. Now's the time to apply it. Oh, no, he do! <laughs> he did precisely the same thing, but that was close. Shabba bounced off the finishing podium. That is as close as he get without actually making it. Jerome now, has he learned from the previous three guys' attempts? Chooses his moment, he's off, gets going fast, a little stumble, and... Oh! He has made it! How on earth did he do that? So an ecstatic Jerome Flatley is through to the wipeout zone. Amazing scenes here at Total Wipeout. So will Phil be joining him? No. No, sorry, Phil. Not even close. <laughs> Dave champing at the bit, choosing his time to go. Sets off. Ooh, little wobble. Oh, does exactly what Phil did. It may look padded, but I suspect that beam has the consistency of a newly felled tree trunk. Oak, probably. Come on now, Shabba. Nail this obstacle. Come on. I'm holding my breath. But not for long, that was an astounding run. Shabba did it with ease. Just one place remains. Will it be Uu Dave or Phil and his massive tie? Phil thinks his time has come. Well, it hasn't, no. An ambitious jump in entirely the wrong direction. Come on now, Dave. Focus. Focus. He's running, he's running, and he's across. Dave's done it, leaving poor Phil with just a couple of balls for company. You almost did it so many times. When I got to the, first, the last step the first time I thought I was in, but my face got in the way when I jumped on, so... Oh, your face. Can you get rid of that thing? Because it really, you know, that's just lost you ten grand. He's caused me problems all my life. Well, that has taken it right out of me. Just let me calm down a bit here. Bit better. Yeah, almost there. Mm. Oh, now I'm fully recharged. OK, roll VT. It's been a shaky start. I wasn't happy with it at all. Ah! I never actually thought I'd get to the wipeout zone. Ah! I'm going to treat this final like it's a fight for a title. Rome has beaten me in every single round. I mean, he's been bouncing around that course like he's on springs or something. I think he's going to fall on the last hurdle. Shabba is a wicked guy. He's been quick, he's been surprising. Yeah! A lot of people say I'm a bit dull. He's the dark horse here, definitely. But professional boxer, we have a parkour master. Boxing comes out on top. It's obstacles in the way of getting from A to B, and that's exactly what parkour is about. He doesn't stand a chance against me. Winning would make people think Shabba is serious now. I haven't really thought about the money yet. I'd be able to help my mum a great deal. 
I'm going to bring that, that cook back on. With the homies, it's, it's always about them and not me. I'm always like the last one left out. Hopefully, I'm going to show my true colours. I'm in the final and I'm definitely going to win. I'm going to smash this course up. I'm going to rip it up. I'm 100% confident I'm going to win this. If the other two uh, injured themselves prior to the uh, start. <laughs> The qualifier, Crash Mountain and Dizzy Dummies have all now been and gone, which means there are only two more things left in this competition. And those two things are uh, uh, the Wipeout Zone and my introduction to the Wipeout Zone. Next, it's the Wipeout Zone. Did I remember to name-check the Wipeout Zone? Today's Wipeout Zone consists of a swift slide down the killer surf, a scorching scramble up the rapid climb to avoid the giant tidal wave, a stable stagger across the all-new seesaw of truth, a sneaky sprint through the crazy sweeper, a scary swing across the scary gap, a solid settle on the turntable, and a smart skip to the finishing podium. Fastest contender will win £10,000. We've got a banker man, we've got a boxer man, and we've got Mr. Lover Man. But there's no love lost here tonight. It's the wipeout zone, and Shaba is the first to go. Now or never. Love you. Shaba might be champion lover, but will he also become a total wipeout champion? And so it begins. Shabba sets off towards the first obstacle in the wipeout zone, the rapid climb. Once Shabba pulls himself onto that ramp, a 10-second countdown begins, after which a giant tidal wave will be unleashed. Where's Shabba? There's Shabba! Get a move on! He's up, so start the clock. This is not good, a very early slip, and now Shabba's sliding backwards. But the clock keeps ticking, and Shabba's nowhere near the summit. Here comes the tidal wave. Shabba clutches the banister for dear life. He's holding on. Great determination. Just about survives the cascades. That will slow him down, but at least he wasn't swept away. Now Shabba can charge up the ramp unhindered and be the first to have a go on the new wipeout zone obstacle, the Seesaw of Truth. A firm footing and good balance are required here, but Shabba's across seemingly without any problem. Now it's the obstacle which has sent many a wipeout zoner for a swim, the Crazy Sweep. Shabba begins his attempt. Looks like he's going to try and do it in one go. Hurry up, Shabba! The sweeper's nearly got you! Oh! Amazing! Just made it! Rope swing now for Shabba. Holding on tight. But he's just missed the target! He held on tight enough, but Shabba's direction was just a little bit off. He's still got one last obstacle between him and the finish. The turntable. Climbs to his feet, jumps... And Shabba completes the wipeout zone in 2 minutes, 57 seconds. Well, Shabba had to face the tidal wave, but he did a tremendous job on the crazy sweeper. Will it be enough to win? Unbelievable performance. Do you want to know your time? Yes, please, definitely. You did that in 2 minutes and 57 seconds. 2.57? OK. And Dave's up next. Let's watch. Thank you very much. Come on, let's have it! He's a banker. He's a bit of a monkey. He's even a free runner. But can Dave become a total wipeout winner? So Shabba couldn't beat the rapid climb. Time to see if Uu Dave can. It's a swim. And then he must haul himself up through the waterfall. The countdown commences. Looking good so far. Those parkour skills already coming in handy. And he's beaten the wave. Oh, God, he's done it. Whoa. Next, the seesaw. Dave edges across, waits for it to tip. There you go. He's across, and now he must face the crazy sweeper. Shabba blazed past this. Will Dave try to do it in one go, too? Nope, he's gone for the duck and run approach. Slower, but probably safer. 
Dave's down again. His cautiousness is costing him valuable seconds. But now he's up and running. And he's across. So it's the rope swing. Shabba got his coordinates all wrong here. Could Dave make up some time now? Big swing. And easily onto the turntable. Moves the rope out of the way. Ooh, 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 Dave dives, and he's done it! 1 minute 34, a very strong time. Dave steps into the driving seat, having beaten Shabba's time by a long way. Over to Amanda to share the news. Dave, you've been banking on a win here all day today. You were faster than Shabba. Shabba, man. I'm sorry, man. I love you, man. You know what this means. Yours is now the time to be. we got Wipeout Wilson coming up next. He's got a few tricks up his sleeve, so it's going to be tough. He's going to be very tough. Right, let's watch. Let's have a game. It's going to be a knockout! So, this is the only man who can beat Dave now, Jerome Flatley. He's out of the ring and into the water. Jerome begins his bid to snatch that 10 grand from underneath Uu Dave's nose, and the time to beat is 1 minute 34. OK, rapid climb. Jerome clambers up onto the slope. Tidal wave in 10 seconds, but look at this. He's not even using the banister. Oh, hands, Jerome! Now to the seesaw. He's on. Good balance. Oh, bit of a wobble there. Ooh. But Jerome safely across now faces the crazy sweeper. Looks like Jerome's going for the cautious approach, like Dave. He's up and running, but that sweeping arm is creeping up on him. Come on, Jerome Flatley, show us some of that fancy footwork. No, he wipes out. Jerome's shown us how quick he is, but even he couldn't outrun the crazy sweeper. That fall means he needs a flawless run from now on to stand any chance of beating Uu Dave. This is going to be very close. Rope swing. Just ten seconds now. Here we go. Great landing. Jerome gets to his feet. Oh, a little bit shaky. Can he do it? No! Jerome's fallen on the last jump. And that is the end of Jerome's title dream. He never looked comfortable on the turntable, and now he must give it another go. Oh, my goodness. It's got to hurt now. And he's done it. Come on. And Jerome finishes in a time of 2 minutes, 12 seconds. Well, it could all have been so different for Jerome. Time for Amanda to tell them both the news. Jerome, my man, my heart is in my mouth. I can't imagine how you must feel. I'm good. And I could have done a lot better than what I did there. As a pro boxer, Jerome, you're undefeated. Dave, tonight, Jerome has lost his 100% record, I'm afraid, because you are the total wipeout champion! Hard luck, my man. Hard luck. So, Dave Fiber, the 26-year-old banker from London, just earned himself a £10,000 bonus. And that's a record. The smallest bonus ever earned by a British banker. You like that? Yeah, you yeah. Anyway, join me next time for a bit of this. Some similar bits like this. And some completely different bits like this. Until then, from all of us at Total Wipeout, it's goodbye. Amanda Byram has another trick up her sleeve next on BBC One. She's joining Lenny and the Magicians. While on BBC Three now, there's action on the racetrack in the top animated film comedy, Cars.